About 11 years ago, a friend of mine contacted me and asked if I had ever heard of Lifeline Pilots. I called and they thought they could help, so I filled out the application. My doctors agreed that it was beneficial. When our fourth child left the nest, I said to my husband, well, now we can do something. We have the time, we could take a trip or a cruise. And he said, well, I always wanted to learn to fly an airplane. And I said, what? Fly an airplane? I had no idea. I said, okay. So we went out to Frasca Field, started lessons, and I was hooked. So I went ahead and um, got my license. I had been so used to doctors and everybody telling me they couldn't help me, and my mom had put her retirement plans on hold so she and I could fly across the country to different specialists to try to figure out my chronic pain and how to stop my repetitive surgeries, one failing after another. I met Wanda Whitsitt at the end of 2015. Uh, when I joined the board of Lifeline Pilots. She started the organization back in 1981. It was the first volunteer pilot organization in the country that does medical transportation. Um, so the mission of Lifeline Pilots is to facilitate free air transportation. Wow, look how old some of these are. I heard about a group of women pilots in Minnesota who were flying blood for the Red Cross. And this led me to thinking, maybe this skill of flying an airplane could be used in other ways to be helpful. And from there, we developed the program of Lifeline Pilots, which would utilize the skills of pilots, and all the expenses would be paid by the pilots themselves. I had seen a specialist who diagnosed me with a rare connective tissue disease that was deteriorating every joint in my body and these specialists were able to help delay the progression of this disease. And I was able to keep my arm 10 years longer than I would have had I not been connected with this organization. Pilots have a special skill, and my hope is that they will use this skill outside of the limits of their life and make a difference in somebody else's life. The day after 9-11, there were many burn victims who needed skin grafts, and we were able to find a pilot who gathered the largest batch of skin graft ever assembled, which was flown to California. There was a, a young boy who had vision problems, and he was going to lose his vision if he didn't get to Mayo Clinic within hours to have it addressed. I had to make 30 phone calls to find a pilot that was immediately available to take him. They did take him up there, he had the procedure, and his eyesight is fine today. I don't throw the word hero around very lightly, but her face comes to my mind. And every pilot and every director on the board, their faces are imprinted in my mind. I ended up with an amputation, but it's not the end of the world. There's still hope for me. I still have a full life to live because of Lifeline Pilots. And I wanna give that hope to other patients. And I plan on using every effort I have left to make sure Wanda's mission continues.